I was really worried I wouldn't have that much to say about the first few episodes, and then I went into a deep dive about why the fabric on a Jin's gun is spectacular foreshadowing. I don't think I'm going to have that much of a problem. <laughs> also, this video is called Episode 2 Retrospective Review, and how amazing does that sound? <laughs> so, Episode 2 and we still have no intro. It's the writer, I swear, he has some kind of personal vendetta against intros. Adito seems a bit concerned about the idea of making a struggling comedian the president all of a sudden. And I think he took the words right out of all our mouths. I know I went to a business and enterprise school because it was the nearest school. But I had no desire to actually learn that stuff and honestly the school had no desire to actually teach that stuff. So needless to say I'm no expert but it doesn't seem like the best of ideas. I don't think the vice president is, you know, wrong for not wanting Aruto in that position. Like, oh, what, he's good for the job because he wants to make Yuma Gear smile. He still needs to know how business works. The vice president, whose name I can't remember, is totally in the right for being annoyed about this turn of events. He's worked for this company for years, at least 12 years if that part of the Rewa movie is to be believed. I'm always fuzzy of the canonity of Kamen Rider films. And then this new and experienced kid comes in. I'd be annoyed too! This is not a dig at Adito by the way, at least he understands that he's inexperienced. It's not his fault he accidentally accepted the job by using the driver. <laughs> Izu then says how human gear basically exists for humans and no human in this series really seems that fussed in changing that. <laughs> you can talk about equality until the cows come home, there was no humans doing things for human gear. It's all about how human gear exists to serve humans and make their lives easier. Watching this scene, it felt like I was watching one of those dystopian stories where it looks like a utopia, but then you scratch the surface and you realise how disturbing it really is. I felt so uncomfortable. <laughs> and I assumed our hero was going to take issue with this kind of mentality. I can't imagine any decent person being okay with an entire race of people who exist to serve unpaid because apparently asking to be paid for your work is weird and disturbing and cause for concern but apparently that's not where the bar is. I am complaining about stuff way too early, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I just take issue with the idea of just wanting humour gear to smile. People smile in customer service all the time even though they're probably dead inside. I don't know throughout this series just doesn't seem able to actually look past the surface. Anyway, we meet Mamoru, oh poor Mamoru. <laughs> the security guard who stares at Aruto doing the whole facial recognition thing and trying to find him in the system I assume. And I appreciate that Aruto doesn't know what he's doing and it must feel very uncomfortable if someone just steps in front of you and stares. And I appreciate I am being really harsh but instead of asking him directly what he's doing he says to Izu he's staring and then makes faces at him. Why don't we just ask him what he's doing? I don't know if the faces were supposed to be funny, maybe they were, I just thought it was ridiculously disrespectful and indicative of why he should not be in this position. Then we get a 10 second scene of Harvey and... I mean that's usually how it happens, right? You don't really see that much of the villains at first, but as the series goes on, they start to make more appearances. I... I didn't realise back then that 10 second Harvey scenes would become the norm. Now I understand going into a super high tech office and wanting to mess with everything, but Adito starts playing around with a humor gear body display and... Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. Jin's at summarizers they deliver humor gear and the humor gear says that they're tasked with making humans happy and I can't stress enough how not okay this is. You should not be living your lives to make humans happy. It's so disturbing when humor gear say that but I assumed that that mentality would eventually be addressed. <laughs> we get into Isaac Asimov's Laws of Robotics and I don't like the laws of robotics. <laughs> Controversial opinion, I'm sure. Izu just says that human gear can't put humans in danger and I mean, yeah, fair enough, people shouldn't hurt people. But while we're on the subject, the three laws are a human may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. A robot must obey the orders given to it by humans, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. And a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So essentially, a robot or an AI would be expected to put themselves in harm's way for the sake of a human and just do whatever the hell a human tells them to do. 
If you were gear bound by all three laws, which I don't believe is ever actually confirmed, she literally only mentions the first one and doesn't even call it a law of robotics, I don't believe it's just if you're familiar with the law of robotics then you recognise it. But if you and are bound by the three laws, then I'm sorry, but that's not even remotely close to equality and certain things are going to need to change. Fua says that all human gear are killing machines and, again, he should not have this job. And does Anato say anything to their defence knowing full well there's a human gear behind him? He does not. He tells a joke instead. There's just something so disturbing about talking like this about human gear in front of a human gear. Anato Henshin's and conceals his identity from Ames leading to Fua mistaking him for a human gear and shooting him, to which Adito says, you got the wrong guy, shoot him. And it's at this point I think I owe Adito an apology for the last video because I don't think he does actually know about hacking yet, but a lot of my point still stands. It's hard to root for our main character saying stuff like that to someone we know is a hacking victim. It's not this huge badass, oh look how cool Zero One is fight, because we know that this is not a villain, this is a victim. We're watching our hero kill victims and seem to have no remorse doing so. And that worked in Gaim when we didn't know until about 15 episodes in and the narrative treated it as a terrible thing to find out. But we know already now. It has a completely different feel to it. So I will give Adito the benefit of the doubt in that regard, but he still knows that he is a human gear, and therefore a life he apparently views as equal to humans. Would he be acting this way towards a human too? This is not your typical monster of the week, and it disturbs me that Adito seems to be treating them that way. I mean, this isn't Adito as much as it's the narrative. The fact that there's just no uneasiness at all about killing human gear just gets to me. <laughs> I think one of the reasons I complain about Aruto so much is that he had so much potential to be this genuinely compassionate character. He did do some really impactful things, especially in early episodes, that made me like the character, and his scene with Mamoru is definitely one of them. Mamoru gets hurt protecting people from the Magia, his arm is slashed, and Aruto noticed and cared and side note, how horrible is it when a human gear's name is their job? His name means protect, like his identity is his job. Another reason why I did not trust Kolonoski at first, and I was expecting some huge thing to be revealed about him, because he personally named Memoru, and it's just so awful and unsettling naming real living people after their jobs, it just solidifies that they have no life outside of their work and Kuronofsky did not consider them real people. Anyway, Adoto notices Mamoru's injury and wraps a scarf handkerchief thing around it while calling Mamoru family. He tells him to get his injury seen to. Mamoru looks at him with this bewildered look like he's just not used to being shown kindness, which said a lot to me about the average employee at Hidden. He must only really be treated as a fancy security system, he might as well be one of those machines that reads your passport. But here Adoto is showing him kindness and treating him as an actual person who needs to take care of himself as well as other people. His job is to protect people but this is likely the first time anyone has ever cared for him. He looks at the scarf around him and he smiles and oh no, Jin is watching him! <laughs> I have stuff to say about the next scene with Adato and Fur on the roof. Fur says this company hasn't changed at all, lying about the murderous nature of humor gear, building your success on a foundation of victims. Obviously we know now Fur's past. It gets complicated as we know. But I have to say, no, this company has not changed. They are indeed building their success on the foundation of victims. Who is, of course, talking about the Daybreak victims, which do we actually have a reliable account of now? Aside from that one bit from the Bus Guide episode. Not important right now. But that point still stands. Think about all the humour gear that have been overworked and mistreated and outright abused. This company has done nothing but build their success on a foundation of victims. Adato swoops in with, wait a minute, humour gear is supposed to make life better. They're what people have dreamed for, which once again solidifies that humour gear are treated as things, not people. Fura <laughs> talks about the Daybreak incident. We all know about that now. But it's just so clear that Fura has trauma over these events and should not be working this job. 
I can't stress that enough, I should never have been allowed to work for Ames. Jin that summarizes Mamoru and Mesabo Jin Lai Netoni Zetsuk. And at this point, Izzy tells Aruto that when a humor gear is hacked, they can't be saved essentially. And Aruto is very emotional about having to fight him. This is what I expected, this is the compassion I was wanting from him. I feel like it would have been a lot different if we were learning about hacking with Aruto and we learned with Aruto that the other two Magia he'd fought and killed were also Humor Gear, but we're not, we already know about it. We knew the Magia was a Humor Gear when Aruto was saying callous stuff like don't shoot me, shoot him. But Aruto is distraught about the idea of having to fight and kill Mamoru. We have a bit where Aruto's Humor Gear Our Humanity's Dream is paralleled with Fura's Humor Gear Our Humanity's Enemy. It's one extreme to another. Fura views them as killing machines and Aruto views them as angels. Both are bad. And while Fura's view does change, Aruto's never does. I'd hoped that they'd meet in the middle by the end, but Aruto just remains static. Viewing Humor Gear as humanity's dream who can do no wrong and are perfect little angels is also bad. Humor Gear should be allowed to make mistakes. They should be allowed to not be perfect, just like humans. No one's perfect and that should extend to Humor Gear too. I understand Aruto's view at this point in the series, I just hate that it never changes. <laughs> you know what else this episode has? An amazing bike sequence! The bike fight! Oh, I love this so much, we don't get nearly enough anymore. I assume to do with the new laws in Japan about modified vehicles. But oh my god, again, removing the fight from the story. That's what I have to do to enjoy these things. Standing on a bike! Oh, so cool! <laughs> It's just so hard to enjoy these fights, it's nothing against Aruto for having to fight. It's just such a sad thing to have to watch. And I would feel bad for Aruto as I did at this point the first time I watched, if he was actually compassionate most of the time and not just occasionally. After the fight, Aruto addresses the public, tells them about Mesbo Jinnai and Humor Gear being hacked. He says not to blame the humor gear for being hacked. I forgot he said that. Can you believe those words came out of his mouth? Episode 2 and he's telling people not to blame humor gear for being hacked. Take your own advice, Aruto. Then he says they are the dream of humanity designed to improve our lives and you've ruined it, you've gone back to disturbing. They should be allowed to be more than just free labor, Aruto. 